Hey guys, I'm John. And today we're here at the Mishimoto Garage to do a complete cooling system overhaul for this 24 valve Dodge Cummins. We're gonna be installing the Mishimoto Performance Aluminum Radiator, silicone hose kit, performance intercooler, and intercooler pipe and boot kit. All direct fit for the 12 and 24 valve Cummins. While you're at it, make sure to pick up some Mishimoto Liquid Chill Synthetic Coolant, specifically formulated for diesel engines. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more second gen Cummins videos. Let's get started on the install. Tools needed for install include 10 and 13 millimeter sockets, 10 and 11 millimeter deep sockets, quarter drive six inch extension with quarter drive swivel, quarter drive ratchet, half inch swivel, 18 millimeter deep socket, half inch short extension, half inch ratchet, 10 millimeter wrench, needle nose pliers, pick tool, flathead screwdriver, and hose clamp tool. Install time is about three hours, and install difficulty is a four out of five. Remove the radiator cap from your radiator. Now, using needle nose pliers, twist and loosen the drain plug on your radiator to drain the coolant. Now remove the upper radiator hose from your Dodge Ram. Use a hose clamp tool to remove the two spring clamps. A pick tool may also be useful when removing the hose. Next, remove the lower hose from your Dodge Ram. Use your hose clamp tool to remove the two spring clips. Again, a pick tool may be useful when removing the hose. Remove the four 10 millimeter nuts that connect the battery harness on top of the radiator. Once the nuts are removed, set the battery harness out of the way. Remove the windshield washer reservoir tank from your fan shroud. There are two little tabs that you push out and upward to remove the tank. Remove the cold side intercooler pipe from your Dodge Cummins. Using an 11 millimeter deep socket, loosen the top constant tension T-bolt clamp that connects the cold side pipe to the intake manifold. Once you loosen the clamp, you can remove the boot from the intake manifold inlet. Then head to the lower half of your cold side pipe and loosen the constant tension T-bolt clamp that holds the intercooler to the pipe. Move over to the passenger side of your Dodge Cummins and remove the hot side intercooler pipe. Using that 11 millimeter deep socket, loosen the constant tension T-bolt clamp that connects the intercooler pipe to the turbo. Once that clamp is loose, you can remove the boot from the inlet. Head down to the intercooler and loosen the constant tension T-bolt clamp that holds the hot side pipe to the intercooler. Once both clamps are removed, go ahead and remove your hot side intercooler pipe. We are now going to modify the truck's subframe body. At the intercooler inlets on each side, find the body panels with flanges. These are located on the front side of the inner wheel wells near both inlets of the intercooler. Take a pair of needle nose pliers or clamps and bend the metal flanges back and out of the way. This will make ample room for the new Mishimoto intercooler. Using a 10 millimeter socket, loosen the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the stock fan shroud to your radiator. There are two bolts on either side. Before setting the fan shroud aside, remove the two clips that hold the fan shroud to the radiator. These are located on top of the radiator and are removed by pulling upward. After the fan shroud is set aside, we can remove the two longer 10 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator to the support bar. Then on the passenger side, remove the overflow coolant line from your radiator. Now you can finally remove the radiator from your Dodge Cummins. Remove the eight 18 millimeter nuts and bolts that hold the front bumper to your Dodge Cummins. There are four nuts and bolts on either side. We highly suggest spraying the bolts with WD-40 before loosening them. We also suggest having a friend to help you remove the front bumper, as it's relatively heavy. Once the front bumper is removed, we can remove the front support. You will have to remove seven 13 millimeter bolts. Once the bolts are removed, you can remove the front support bar. Just lift the bar up off the front of the truck and let it hang on the driver's side next to the front fender. Now we are going to remove the AC condenser and trans cooler from your Dodge Cummins. To do that, use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the three bolts and four nuts that hold the unit together. The four nuts are located where the AC condenser and trans cooler meet up. The remaining three bolts are located on the outside of the condenser and the trans cooler. Once everything is loosened, let both the condenser and cooler hang to the side of your Cummins. Using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the intercooler to the truck. 
You can now remove your intercooler assembly from your Dodge Cummins. You may need a friend to help you with this, as the intercooler and AC condenser might get in the way. Now that you have the entire cooling system apart, it's a great time to replace your thermostat. Mishimoto sells a low and a high temperature version, depending on the climate you live in and the performance you're looking for. Transfer the four bushings from the factory intercooler to the new Mishimoto intercooler. There are two bushings on either side. Once that is done, you can now install your new Mishimoto intercooler into your Cummins. You may need a friend to help you lift it in and put it in place. If you are installing the Mishimoto intercooler alone, you're going to need one or two friends to help lift up on the factory radiator in order to remove and reinstall the intercooler. Tighten down your intercooler with the two 10mm bolts that hold the intercooler to the body of the truck. Next, install the supplied Mishimoto 10mm bolt for the trans cooler. Now, take the Mishimoto provided bracket and attach it to the intercooler as shown here. The two shorter 10 mm bolts are provided with the intercooler. Once the bracket is attached to the intercooler, you can take the Mishimoto supplied nut and bolt and attach the trans cooler to the bracket. The bolts that attach the new Mishimoto brackets are the shorter ones, whereas the nuts and bolts that attach the AC condenser and the transmission cooler are longer. All the bolts have a 10 mm head. Now, take the second Mishimoto bracket and attach it with the two bolts to the bottom of your intercooler as shown here. Remember to use the shorter of the 10mm bolts when attaching the bracket to the intercooler. Once the lower bracket is attached, take the last 10mm nut and bolt that attaches the trans cooler and tighten it down. Use your 10mm socket to make sure everything is tightened down on the brackets and the trans cooler. Now you can tighten down your AC condenser. Start with the two supplied 10 mm bolts that connect the AC condenser to the side of the intercooler. Now, head over to the brackets you previously installed, and using the supplied 10 mm nuts and bolts, attach the AC condenser to the bracket where the trans cooler is attached. Once everything is tightened and secured, we can now install our front support bar. There are a total of seven 13 mm bolts. Now, take the two boots with the bends and separate them. These boots increase from 3 to 3.6 inches, and they both have noticeable bends. The boot with the sharper bend goes on the cold side of the intercooler, while the boot with the moderate bend goes on the hot side. Go ahead and start prepping the cold side pipe. Install both boots onto the straight aluminum pipe. The pipe that connects to the intercooler will have the boot with the deepest bend. The side of the pipe that connects to the intake manifold will have the smaller boot. To make install easier, slide the straight boot that connects to the intake manifold all the way onto the aluminum pipe as shown here. Once the entire pipe is connected, you can attach the four Mishimoto provided constant tension T-bolt clamps. Use a 10 mm deep socket for all four of the clamps. Now on the hot side, take the aluminum pipe and attach the longer end onto the bent boot that attaches to the intercooler. Take the other straight boot and slide that onto the other end of the aluminum pipe, which attaches to the turbo on your Cummins. Once the entire pipe is connected, you can attach the four Mishimoto provided constant tension T-bolt clamps. Tighten down the entire hot side pipe using a 10 mm deep socket. Now we can prep the Mishimoto aluminum radiator for install. Transfer the rubber bushings from the factory radiator to the Mishimoto radiator. There are a total of four bushings all together, two on each side. Now, let's install your new Mishimoto radiator. With the Mishimoto radiator in place, reattach the two long 10 mm bolts back into the radiator support bracket mounts. There is one bolt on either side of the rad. Reattach the fan shroud back onto the radiator. You will attach the shroud with the four 10 mm bolts you previously removed that held the fan shroud to the radiator. There are two bolts on either side. Before moving on, reattach the two clips that hold the fan shroud to the radiator. Attach the windshield washer reservoir tank to your fan shroud on the driver's side. There are two little tabs that you push in, and they will connect to the fan shroud molding to keep the tank in place. Set the battery harness in place on the top of your Mishimoto radiator. 
attach the four 10mm nuts that connect the battery harness on top of the radiator. On the passenger side, attach the overflow coolant line from your overflow tank to your radiator. Now, install your upper radiator hose to your Dodge Cummins. This is a great time to replace your old factory rubber hoses with a Mishimoto silicone coolant hose kit. Once the hose is attached, use a hose clamp tool to attach the spring clips to the hose. Each end will take one spring clip to keep it in place. Now, take the factory lower radiator hose and remove the inner anti-collapse spring. Install it into the Mishimoto silicone lower radiator hose. This may take some twisting, but be sure to seat it in the center of the hose. Now, you can install the lower radiator hose on your Cummins. Once the hose is attached, use a hose clamp tool to attach the two spring clips to the hose. Each end will take one spring clip to keep it in place. Now, let's install the front bumper. You may need a friend to help you lift the front bumper up and into place. Reinstall the eight 18 mm nuts and bolts that hold the front bumper to your Cummins. There are four nuts and bolts on each side. We also suggest that you have a partner help you attach the bumper, as you want to make sure it's lined up properly. Now that we're almost done the install, let's go ahead and top the system with Mishimoto's Liquid Chill Full Synthetic Coolant, specifically designed for diesel engines. If you're not familiar with how to bleed your cooling system, or you just need a quick refresher, check out our DIY video for how to bleed your cooling system. Double check to make sure that all your constant tension T-bolt clamps are tight and that everything is all wrapped up before you go ahead and take your Cummins for a test drive. Also, don't forget to click subscribe.